Selling on Walmart is a huge opportunity to make money online, whether this is your first business or you're already an e-commerce pro. Even though it's still pretty early days for selling products on Walmart, they're already the second biggest e-commerce marketplace for sellers like you and I to sell products. And while Amazon will probably be my primary marketplace for making money for a long time to come, adding Walmart into my business has been a relative no-brainer for increasing revenue. And especially for those of you with existing businesses on Amazon or any other platform, having one more place to sell anything you're having trouble with is a really good idea. And just in case you're brand new to the channel, my name's Warner Fields. I started selling products on Amazon about five years ago as a college side hustle, and I built that into a $5 million business. And while my Walmart expertise is nowhere close to my Amazon expertise, I have been able to sell several thousand dollars on the Walmart marketplace. And I want to share the full process of everything that I've done to be able to get some products off the ground and start selling on Walmart. And there are a couple major pros and cons to selling on the Walmart marketplace. The major downside is that there's just not quite as many customers, and there's also definitely not the same kind of refined systems. If you've already looked at selling on Amazon or eBay or one of those and you thought their systems are complicated, wait till you see Walmart. I'm sure a lot of that is just growing pains that they'll grow out of. I've seen things become easier and easier even in the last year or so of selling on Walmart. And to me, the major benefit of selling products on Walmart, the fact that it is such a new market also comes with some pros though. There's a lot less red tape, less bureaucracy that I've had to deal with, less effort involved in being able to get approved to sell certain products and all that kind of stuff. And it also has the major benefit of having a lot more buyers per seller than a marketplace like Amazon does. For me personally, while recording this video, starting an Amazon business is still what I would do if I was starting from ground zero. But if you're anyone who has a reselling, wholesale, or private label business already existing on another platform like Amazon, this video is going to be super valuable. You're going to start making more money than before. So now that you know about the opportunity, let's go ahead and get a little bit more tactical and break down the step-by-step -step process of signing up for Walmart, making your first sales, and figuring out which products you can even sell on Walmart in the first place, right? So square one, obviously we have to go ahead and get approved for a Walmart selling account. Getting approved for one of these accounts is a little bit harder than getting an Amazon account or an eBay account or one of those. It seems like the application is more suited towards people who already have some kind of existing business. So through the sign up process here, you are going to need a legal business. So for most of you guys, that's just going to be a single member LLC. You can get that set up with the Secretary of State's office in your state because at the sign up process, you can't use your social security number like you can with some platforms. Forms, you actually have to have a tax ID number like an EIN. And then personally, when I went through the sign up process, I think they start asking for it past this initial create an account step. They also do ask you to provide proof that you have some kind of existing business already. So it seems like Walmart doesn't want the brand new sellers who have never sold anything before. For me, I was able to use my Amazon storefront. And for any of you guys who already have existing Amazon businesses, you can provide that Amazon storefront as your existing business just to prove to Walmart that you, you know what you're doing already. For me, the approval process was relatively quick. I was able to get it done within a week or two. And then once you actually do get that account approved, fully set up, once you log into the dashboard, it's going to look something like this. Like I said, I haven't been going too crazy selling on Walmart yet. It has been a good way to add a few hundred extra dollars every week or so to my existing reselling business. And I'm definitely looking at scaling the Walmart side of the business a lot more. And with that in mind, let's talk about what products you can even sell on Walmart, right? So for me personally, my business is mostly focused on reselling. So stuff like this random makeup, right here, 30 bucks. I was able to find a coupon on this for me to be able to buy it for $25. See, this is the typical stuff that I've been able to sell millions of dollars online doing. I'm just selling like random name brand cosmetic stuff. See, this sells 80 something times a month. It sells for 50 bucks on Amazon. And this is where we start to get into the tricky part of selling on Walmart. And that's just because Walmart shares basically no data with us as sellers, like they share sales rank and lots of other great data that helps companies like SellerAmp build the best tools for Amazon and that kind of stuff. But when it comes to Walmart, Walmart, it's hard to really know exactly how fast these products are actually selling on the Walmart marketplace. They don't show sales ranks, anything like that. And you will also see some other tools out there claiming that they have Walmart sales data and all that kind of stuff. The vast majority of that is frankly, is just made up data right now. I've done a lot of digging on it. I wish there was a good Walmart tool right now. And so just be very wary of companies claiming to have the perfect data right now. What I've been doing recently is basically inferring based on how fast something sells on Amazon. In my mind, it's likely for these products to sell a good proportion slower on the Walmart marketplace. So looking back at this example item here, knowing that this sells 80 something times a month on Amazon, I would probably infer that it sells maybe five or 10 times a month on Walmart. The only real way for us to know is to go ahead and start adding some of these products to our inventory. Basically the best data we do have to go off of to know how fast certain products are already selling is if they have existing ratings. So for example, like Adidas shoes, that kind of stuff that a lot of you guys also sell on Amazon. There's also a big market for you to be selling those exact same products on Walmart and 
And when you're selling on Walmart, you can sell directly to the customer or you're shipping off to them, or you can also use the Walmart fulfillment services, which is basically very similar to Amazon FBA, where they take care of a lot of the shipping and all that kind of stuff for you. But before you worry about any of that, it's really important to know if something's actually going to sell. So I'll usually go in here and sort by most recent reviews. And so for example, on this listing, I can see like the last review was earlier this year in March. And then there was one in February, there was one in January. So it seems like it was selling pretty well. It seems like maybe even like during the holiday season, but picked up a little bit. See lots of these around like Thanksgiving and then after Christmas, maybe left some post Christmas ratings, that kind of thing. So right now recording this, we're about to go into the holidays. So this could be like a good example of an item that you could go ahead and send straight into Walmart fulfillment services, right? You should be pretty well assured that the classic black and white shoe, that kind of thing, is probably going to sell pretty decently well on Walmart. Something like this, since we have no ratings, I would probably go ahead and list this via Walmart fulfillment. And let's just go ahead and walk through that process real quick so you can see how it works. So to start listing your products, go ahead and head to catalog right here. And then up in the top right corner, go ahead and press add items. This is going to take you to their backend listing creation. Basically, you can upload things through a spreadsheet. And this is where things, at least for me personally, have gotten a little bit frustrating with selling on the Walmart marketplace. Definitely not quite as dialed in. There's a lot more bugs and that kind of stuff compared to older marketplaces. And so for me, I just haven't had a lot of success getting those bulk uploads to work. What I typically do, though, is I'll just go ahead and use this search by Walmart catalog down here and search by UPC or by item title. So in this example, let's just say we want to test out this product here based on the fact that we talked about we know it's good on Amazon. So let's see if it's good on Walmart too, right? So right here, go ahead and press add item right there. This is going to go ahead and start adding this item to our catalog. To make a seller fulfilled listing is relatively simple. I'm just going to go ahead and create a SKU here. This is just an example that we're driving into for the video. Right now, I saw that seller on Walmart was at $72. So we might as well price match them at least for a day or two, see if it sells and we can always gradually make our way down in pricing. And then they also do ask for the shipping weight of your product. Typically for me, I'm just listing things that I also want to sell on Walmart. So I'll use the dimensions on seller amp, which in this case is going to be 14 ounces. So I'm just going to call it like 0.9 pounds there. Keep it simple. And then down here in the bottom, let's go ahead and press submit. That's going to submit that product off to Walmart here. Typically, if you get to this step in the process, it will work. And then you just go in and basically adjust the quantity of the item up to what you actually have. But like I was saying, there is some bugs and that kind of stuff when it comes to listing items, especially. So if you do have any issues, you'll be able to see it all in the activity feed. So it looks like everything went pretty smooth with listing this item here, for example. So if you want to start testing it out to see if you can make seller fulfilled sales, you just go ahead and adjust the inventory number right there. Change that to however many you actually have on hand. And then when that product actually sells, it will show up in the orders tab or on the home tab, you'll go in and buy your shipping for that item. That part is relatively self-explanatory. And I just want to touch on the really important things here today. But let's say you make a couple sales via seller fulfilled and you want to be doing less work yourself. You want to have Walmart ship those orders off to the customers when the product sells. Or if you're someone who's used to doing Amazon FBA, what you'll do is you click this drop down over here. You'll press fulfill with Walmart fulfillment services. And instead of a relatively simple item listing process, this is where you'll have a lot more stuff to fill out. The more of this that you do fill out, the better, even though a lot of it is unnecessary for the types of products you're looking at. For me, it's helped me avoid a lot of listing errors and that kind of stuff. I actually go in here and provide dimensions of the item. You'll need to punch in what's actually in it. So for example, I think this was like 11 ounces. So I go ahead and put 11 fluid ounces right there. So there's a little bit more involved in the process of getting these items eligible for Walmart fulfillment services. After you fill this all out and submit this to Walmart, it's going to do the exact same thing where it'll go to the activity feed. Sometimes it might have an error. Sometimes it won't. After you go through that process and fill it all out, it should go ahead and tell you that the item is now WFS eligible. And now we can go ahead and ship this off to Walmart so that they can take care of the customer service and all that for us. To do that, you'll go down to the shipments tab of WFS, go to up here and press send inventory. And then here under the inbound order creation screen, again, I'm not going to dive through every single step of this. It gets a little boring, but if enough of you guys like it, drop a comment down below and let me know if you want me to make videos on making the shipments and all that kind of stuff for Walmart. But basically what you'll do is you just type in the item name of the products that you just listed and are showing WFS eligible. And then it walks you through a relatively simple step-by-step -step process of getting those items actually shipped off to WFS. I do also still want to address the golden question of what about fees and all that kind of stuff. How do you actually know how much money you're making? But if you're finding value in this so far, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That helps me out massively sure for sharing some value with you. It was always my childhood dream to have a 100k YouTube plaque. Never thought it would be possible, but now it's looking like it might actually be. So help me accomplish my childhood dream and let's talk about Walmart fees.
So let's say, for example, we wanted to sell that makeup product we were looking at. That's going to be in the beauty category, and that was going to be a sale price greater than $10. So we would end up paying 15% on selling that item. As a general rule, I've found Walmart fees to be a little bit cheaper than Amazon. Not significantly cheaper, but it does seem like they're trying to win a little bit of market share by making fees cheaper. And these referral fees plus any shipping fees you're going to end up paying on the per unit basis, those would be pretty much all the fees you're going to pay actually fulfilling seller fulfilled items. And then if you do go ahead and use Walmart fulfillment, that's going to apply a WFS fee. So if you sell on Amazon, that's like your pick and pack fee, basically. And using an example like that makeup we were looking at, relatively small jar that's about a pound, that would cost $5 in fulfillment fees. But you can just look up WFS fees if you're curious on this, just out of curiosity, what if you had like a 10 pound product? So that would be nine bucks here. I guess it'd be more realistic. It'd be a little bit you know, bigger dimensionally. So let's see, like 12 by 12. Okay, so yeah, seems like it's very per pound based, which is something that I've tended to see so far. And then you also do have some interesting things fees where apparel is more per unit by 50 cents and then items that are less than ten dollars you actually have an extra dollar to the fulfillment fee which to me would make making a profit on those cheaper items pretty difficult and maybe you guys have some creative ideas for how to source those items you're selling for nine or ten dollars so hopefully you found this video helpful and it adds a bunch of extra revenue to your existing business. I'm far from a Walmart expert, but I couldn't really find any good videos on this type of stuff when I was setting up my Walmart account. So hopefully it's filling a gap in the market and you found this useful. If so, once again, you wanna share that value back, hit the subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Always happy to answer those down below, but I really appreciate you watching this video and I will see you next time.